Hi, it's your favourite Yorkshire demo here. This is Susanna at Hullabaloo.com and today is another In My Simple Sunday series. Today we will be making this card. What is my Simple Sunday series? Simple Sunday is where I challenge myself to use a white card base and a 3 by 3 topper to showcase a single stamp set or die set within the Stamping Up current catalogue. As you can see here, today's stamp set is a Christmas one. So this card here was made using Gnome for the Holidays. So as you can see, this stamp set is gorgeous. It has eight pieces and is a cling stamp set, but it's a good line stamp set. I love stamps where it just stamps the line for me and then I can choose to colour it in. So we'll get started. Um, so, alongside the stamp set, you will need a card base. This is 4 and 1 8 by 11 and 3 quarters, scored at 5 and 7 8 I have a 3 by 3 piece ready for the topper. And then I have a scrap of white, which is where I will be stamping this little guy. Just move these out of the way. And grab my memento ink. Okay, so the stamps that we will need... I'm going to go with the same little guy again, and it's this one in the corner carrying his bauble. This is this one here, and I can get him out. There we go. So, little gnome, and then we've got the house in the background, so this is like a little tree house. And then the sentiment, which says, holly jolly everything. Pop that out of the way. So, block. What will we need? We will need a D block for the house. We will need another D block for the gnome himself. And then what will we need there? What's this? This is a B block. Let's get that straight. There we go. Okay, so. We'll need our card topper and our scrap. We'll pop our card base out of the way for a moment. And how I stamped the topper was I did the sentiment first and I put it as far into the bottom corner, the bottom right hand corner as I could, making sure it's well inked up. And there we go. And then We'll ink the little house and then I put this as far as I can to the right but without going over that sentiment so that when we put the little gnome on there's still plenty of house showing. And the good thing about this stamp is it, this gap here, just here, can fit round the sentiment like so. Make sure it's straight with the top. Down it goes. Beautiful. Love it. Okay, and then the gnome himself goes on to our scrap piece that we have here. Okay, so that's enough stamping. Pop the memento out of the way. Okay, so I'm using a few colours here to colour these in. And we're going to start with the little house. So I am using stamping blends. These are alcohol markers from Stampin' Up! that come in a pair with a dark one and a light one. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and just show you how I colour this in. There we go. Okay, so for the tree here, you can see in the design already that it's given you lots of lines and indications of where shade should be. So all I'm going to do is use those as part of my colouring. I always start with the darker pen um, and then I shade up that dark side there and then any little crevices that are on the tree like this. The great thing about these pens is they have dual tip so I use the bullet end as I find I have more control unless I'm doing a, a wash that maybe you know like if I'm if I wanted the little gnome to look like he was on the floor, I'd use the brush tape. But you have two ends to choose from. So once I've gone 
in these little crevices like so. I'm just going to follow the lines of the tree with my dark pen, like so, creating the shadow that is needed on this tree. And then I will do the outline as well, making sure I don't go over any other bits of the, the tree where we don't need our any darkness. There you go, see? Looks lovely. And then this is where the light comes in. So because they alcohol markers, they do blend together and they blend beautifully. So I just colour over the whole of the tree, making sure I also go over the dark parts, blending them all in together like so. And then making sure I go around these leaves at the top. And then I like to have a neat edge where it ends at the top there. And again, just keep that all lovely and neat around this little door and between the bits of grass, like so. Does anyone else find colouring in like this therapeutic? I love it. I could sit here and just keep colouring this and other things for the rest of the night. All night I could, quite, you know, just sit here colouring in as a bit of relaxation time. Okay, so there's the tree done. I don't need the Sahara sand fern. It's off suede for anything else now. So we're going to move on. Um, so for the door of the house, I am using Smoky Slate. Um, I will also be using this. Oh, no, I'm not using it for his beard. I was going to use it for his beard, but I thought it'd be nice and not make him older than he seemed. And again, up those lines that they've given us for indication of shade. And then up around the edge of the door there, because there will be some shadow it looks like it closes inside the tree and again round the window and underneath and then when we've done that again out with the with the light and go over all of it and as you can see the colouring regardless of how I colour all blends beautifully and unlike when you use do you remember when you coloured in at school and you coloured in lines and then you could see every line that you'd drawn. I'm just going to come back in with the dark and I'm going to spot it a little bit I've missed on the door handle. Okay so that's smoky slate done. So I'm going to bring in just jade um, and start with the dark again. I'm going to use this on both the tree and our little guy over there. So with the light side, uh, with the bullet tip on the dark pen. I'm going to pick out the lines on these leaves like so and then I'm going to go up bits of the grass here just to give it a bit of shade and then I'm going to bring the light pen in and over like we did with the others. And again just following those lines at the top so that we get a nice soft end to where the colouring is. Now this is a bit more adventurous for one of my simple Sundays. I wanted you to show that whilst you do I've used a few pens here you don't need to use all these pens and um, this is just my choice you could keep them black and white and stamp them. You could use pencils. I've got Stampin' Up do a beautiful set of watercolour pencils um, which you could use if you didn't want to use the pens. You could use markers. So we've got Stampin' Right markers like this that they could be coloured in with. You can use absolutely anything. You could get an aqua painter um, or even one of these blend pens um, and use anything you wanted. Some people like to put a bit of blob of ink 
on um, a block and then use their aqua painter. Um, it was just my choice to use blends. I find them really easy. I love using them. And so on the gnome's hat, I'm using the dark, just jade on every other stripe. And I'm just creating a dark edge on the underneath of the hat there. And then this element here, and then just where his beard is, because that'll cast a shadow. And same under the arm. Then, like the other, we're going to bring in the light. We're just going to go over it all. Like so. And if you do it a couple of times, you'll see that it actually starts blending out. So I blend out once, and then I go back in again. Look at the gradient you get there, it's beautiful. Colour the rest of his, his clothing in. So I've given him just jade uh, shirt here. And that's it now for the just jade. So I'll bring in the red shade I'm using is Cherry Cobbler. And then I'm just following that line that I've already created in jade and just replicating it in the cherry, like so. Again, this is the dark pen. And then I'm going to do the front of his shoes and the trousers, like so. And then get the light cherry cobbler. And just like the other, go in and cut the rest of it in. And then blend out. I'm going to do this bow here. I've spotted a bit I've missed with my Just Jade. So I want to finish the rest of his shoes off here. Like so. And then I did use Cherry Cobbler here on the house too. So for the lights, I use the light cherry cobbler for two of these little Christmas lights on the house. Okay, so that's the cherry cobbler. I'll just bring the just jade back in to do that little bit that I've, that I've missed up here on the leaves. There we go. Okay, so this is crumb cake. I'm going to use dark crumb cake on his beard and then light crumb cake is a good skin colour. Ivory is too, so you can use either, but because I've used crumb cake for his beard, I'm just going to use the light one for his nose and his face and his hands. Like so. And then the final bit, Misty Moonlight, which will be the top and bottom of his baubles. This is the dark. Again, there's some shade there against his body. Um, and then we're going to colour that in. Like we have all the rest and blend it out. And then... The light one has also been used as a fairy light, like so. And then to finish that bauble off, I'm using, uh, this is Daffodil Delight. So I just follow the shaded line there. And then I'm using the dark one here on the lights because I feel it's a bit brighter. And then, like before, oops, wrong tip. With the light tip, we'll finish colouring that out. Like so. There we have our components ready. So we're going to pop the little house to one side and we're going to focus on the gnome himself. I've got my paper snips. These are available from my online store. And all we're going to do is we're going to cut round him. Like so. 
Now, this is what we call fussy cutting because you're cutting close round and leaving the white edging, which I love the white edging. So let your scissors do the work. You move your card and then let the scissors just glide through it. I find that the wider open the scissors, the easier it is. So when you can get to a place where you can trim and start, or keep them wide as you can, and then they do it with a gliding motion, if that makes sense. Follow it round. I'm doing this quite quickly here, just so that you don't have to watch me cut this too intricately. So we'll go around his beard. Don't do what I did and nearly cut off his arm. We'll go round. And then I just trim the excess off as we go. Now that just getting that little gap there in his shoes. And round we go. Round the last little shoe. And then we'll just trim round this barbell. And there we have it. Just pop these out of the way and we'll zoom back out. Out she says and then zooms in. Try that again. Okay so we've got our little tree, we've got our gnome and now we've got our card blank. So we want to pop this on the front on dimensionals. So just grab mine. Ooh, I'm on a brand new sheet so we just fold this in half and then we can get at the middle there so we use five on the three by three piece one in every corner and one in the middle and then the little gnome himself I pop um, maybe three on him one for the top of his hat one for his barbell and then one where his face is. So then we'll take our backings off like so. Once you can get the backings off, there we go. Four and five. And then in true style, this will be a uh, simple. Is that the right way? That's the right way now. Similar gap at the top and the two sides, like so. Just press that down, and then this little guy, he's just going to stand. Could I stand in there? No, I'll stand him here. So the house was a little bit further over on that one, but we can have him hanging over the edge. There's nothing wrong with that. So we'll get him positioned. And I'm going to pop him just there like so and there we go all that we're missing is the little little piece of ribbon so this is the braided linen trim and we're just going to make a small little bow like so and then we're going to position this on the top corner with a glue dot there we go Give that a trim. And grab my glue dots. And then all I do here, so I'll see if I can show you this up close, is one of these glue dots, I just roll it back on itself. So you get it like that on your finger. Pop it on the back of the bow. And then Get my bow positioned up in the top corner and there we are two gorgeous little christmas cards using a single stamp set which do you prefer i think i prefer this one and just have i think i've placed the house a little bit better on that one than that one join me next sunday for another in the simple sunday series where i'll be showing casing another card 
with a card, three by three card topper with a single stamp set. And I'll see you next time. Don't forget, head on over to my YouTube and to like and subscribe, hit that little bell in the corner. If you are on YouTube watching this, if you click in the description bar below, you will see links to the blog posts that show you everything I've used to make this and how to shop via my online store. And see you next time. Bye-bye.